I, I was listening to uh, Queen of California last night, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I was listening to it on my AirPods, and I just don't think I've ever listened to it with, like, not in a car or whatever. And I was just, I was just freshly amazed. Just again. vibing. All the little parts, yeah, and how they pan them all, and pan them all is uh, the country pan next to Panama. All. That's Panama. You guys know that one? Yeah, Ben Halen. Yeah, Ben Halen. Ben Halen. Yeah, he does good work. <laughs> um, all right, boys, we're, we're live. Uh, David Funk. We're live streaming to the masses. Uh, David. Uh, we can just do this as a conversation, but why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and why you would possibly be on the Valor podcast? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> open us. Um, well, yeah, I'm David Funk, and I' uh, happy to be on this podcast. Yep, yep. We're glad um, to have you. I've known Ross and Riley for a long time now, and Ethan for also a long time, but not as long. But mm. now it's all you know. It's basically all the same. That's about five years. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I've known Ross and Riley though for um, coming up on a decade, I would say. Mm. Right? Um, Am I overdoing the math there? I think you're like right four, on the money there. Four years of high school, basically, and then has it? We uh, met the summer of eighth grade. So greater than it was that, the summer. You're, you're 14 oh, and yeah. uh, coming out of eighth grade. Ross is 25. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, decade. Yeah. I'm One like, decade. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Mm. And, you know, I've been an investor of Valor from the beginning. You know? Right. <laughs> thank you. That's thank right. You, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's been many times, you know, when, you know, the the owners have come to me, mm. you know, in duress. Seeking your advice. <laughs> no, that's not true. But I am, I am, I am proud to be, to have known the Valor, the three Valor boys and their wives from the beginning and seeing you guys take this thing from, you know, the little coffee cart that catered Riley's wedding <laughs> to, uh, you know, what we know as the massive corporation that is um, changing coffee culture as we know it mm. today. Wow. Wow. Conglomerate. Do you, Conglomerate, yeah. Do you happen to remember, like, our first, what we used to say, like, some of our early verbiage about our mission statement? Oh, I don't know. Is this like a test? Like, am I? Do well, I really the way, know? The way that you just said it, kind of was close, but it's like douche level ten. <laughs> it was um, Valor Coffee exists to change the way that people perceive co- coffee in the North Georgia area. I love that. All right, guys, for our viewing. <laughs> Let's pleasure. go. Yes. Let's Come on. go. Oh yeah. Ever since we've been friends, we've had this <laughs> yeah. idea of starting a company. How do I make it bigger? Well, if you mouse over it, there should be some arrows. Yeah, so I'm mousing over it. You see? <laughs> you could just zoom in. What if we refresh the page? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, it, dis- it disappears. Maybe, maybe before you hit play, you should full screen it. Ooh, one more time. It, that wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. See? Oh, yeah, you're right. Is there another? I think our viewers are getting a little worn out. Maybe we should just roll it. That wasn't the... Uh, that wasn't the video, anyways. Uh, here it is. This is it on this'll Facebook. Be just fine. This will work. There's the oh, air hey. compressor. Ever since we've been friends, we've had this crazy idea of starting a company. And in the past couple months, we've decided to act on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> oh, that, so oh, that was dude. the video. The culture, culture song. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry, that Culture Vulture, we did not receive rights to use this song. Yeah, hey guys, I'm Riley Westbrook, and this is my friend Ross Walker. Ever since we've been here, <laughs> we've had this crazy thing about starting a company. And in the past couple months, we've decided to act on it. The two of us see... Co- Ever since we've been friends... Oh, did it just sorry. refresh? Well, I, I changed it to HD because uh, it looked like a yeah, it looked potato. Like in the past couple months, we've decided to act on it. You should give us a little more volume, maybe. The two of us maybe. see coffee as an incredible resource with unlimited potential. Well, if uh, I do that, we really you're right. Just want to Don't worry about that it. And change the way people perceive coffee throughout North Georgia. Valor is an Thank idea you. unlike any we've seen in the area. 
we desire to bring this culture we've laid out to fruition through means of pop-up shop and catering for small businesses, weddings, parties, or any event that wants delicious coffee. Ooh, we'll have the a full espresso movement. bar with lattes, cappuccinos, and other things. Oh, story a story. Along with a yeah. station, Was that a Midland? Coffee, unlike no. Copper. Copper cup coin. coin. Everyone's experience with coffee is different. Mm. Whether it Can you pause this really quick? This story is really funny because uh, <laughs> we worked at a, like you said, Midland. We worked at a coffee shop that was basically a deli and we used coffee uh from a roaster which will not be named mm. but we asked that roaster if we could film a video in their roastery yeah and i was like man this is kind of a stretch because like this is our company and like technically we would eventually be in competition with them but we just like didn't say anything and uh we got there and halfway through filming the video the guy, we were, I was like, you know, man, thank you so much for letting us come here and film. It really means a lot. He's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're asking to make a video about our coffee so that we can sell more of our coffee. <laughs> like thinking that we were making like a promo for our <laughs> job at the time. Um, and I was like, yeah. For sure. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah. And uh, so that's, oh, boy. we're in this roastery right now. Backstory. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, if we're going to be doing a video breakdown, I have so many other things I wanted to say before we, in the first minute, I wanted to ask you, did you have any dialogue with the people on set when you were wearing sunglasses <laughs> in recording, or was this like a hill that you decided to Did you get any on? feedback? <laughs> I think it was more of like a, I was watching Casey Neistat at the time. Oh, yeah. And so I'm like, not that I was like trying to be him, but like he gave me the permission to be me. Who? Mm. So just, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll let that sit for a second. I'll let that sit for but, a second. Oh um, yeah, you know, that way I don't have to worry about looking at the camera and all yeah. that. I can just be me. Wow. Thank you. Wow. You know, I might put some sunglasses on right now. Maybe you actually. should. Good. I got several pair in the car. Uh, yeah, I was not being me in this video. <laughs> I'd never been in front of a camera in my entire life. So. <laughs> Dude, you're everything. Not being me. But now. But like, did. Just you're on, second nature. You're on camera, you know? baby. Right I mean, now. did you see the 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 Instagram thing that Riley starred in about something about some charity and you buy through Amazon? Mm. I mean, that was I that watched, was pristine. Like that? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. watched him film it. I did. It really, looking back on it, it really looks like I'm in front of a green screen. I know, which it's is kind of funny. Insane. <laughs> is it because of the lighting? Ross is just so still. I think the lighting was just too good. Yeah. Oh. It was like too perfect. Like we got to make it worse, you know. <laughs> okay. Be worse to be better. All right, should we should That's we right. finish this? Uh any other things you want to say real quick Ethan? I know you wanted to do some breakdowns of some other stuff. Uh maybe we'll let it roll. I mean, just for context. Um, when did when did you guys film this? Cuz at this point, yeah. I mean, this is a whole another story, but I was just like supposed to be their employee at yes. this point in time. It was probably in like June of 2016 cuz Kickstarter released in August. And I just remember, like, having swamp ass and that raw denim and Aww. walking around Atlanta. Rod, we both You're were wearing raw some denim. raw denim. That's right, man. Easy. No. My shirt was, like, in, <laughs> raw indigo, denim. Raw denim. indigo dye. <laughs> like, I had to have been so uncomfortable. Did you, like, take your shirt off and you're all blue and the indigo? <laughs> For sure. You lay like, down at night and your body is still blue. Blue nips. Yeah, yeah. Smurf all the time. mode activated. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Yes. Yarch. And yeah, our, yeah. our former... Oh, oh, lead oh. roaster Dale uh, made this video and That's filmed right. it. So, yeah. <clears throat> before you, I I just want to say I had a podcast title idea to bring Dale on and say, um, former or ex roaster tells all on Valor Coffee yes. Podcast. That's, That's good. Well, nice. Dale said he was going to record a a video. It's like tit, like. Ten reasons I'm leaving Valor. <laughs> <laughs> you should. That's ten ten so reasons funny. you shouldn't work at Valor Coffee. We should get him to do it, but it should be like super, super spun, like in a positive light. Yes. But we should like make him do it. Yeah. You know, like, yes. like force him. Like yeah. the first reason, like the bosses, they were just they were just too good to me. You know, yeah. they asked me how I was doing too many times yeah. in yeah. the day. The lighting in the roastery was just, it was too perfect. It was like I was yeah. working in front of a green screen. I was yeah. working in Photoshop. <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. We had similar experiences until finally we tasted a great cup of coffee that tasted like strawberries and dark chocolate and everything. <laughs> we had no idea that coffee could taste this way. And because of that, we decided that we wanted to share that with you. 
Yeah, we yeah. think that community happens when an object or an idea Speak it, Ross. is so beautiful that a group of people gather around it to partake in it. And we think good coffee oh, yeah. is a <coughs> community built around it. And that's why we created Valor Coffee. Along with serving delicious <laughs> things, we'll be partnering with local businesses and serving glass, their products along with ours. Look how we'll red your face roasters. looks. I was nervous. And no, sober. I'm just saying, like, they I mean, all did it. All the shots edit are like video. blown out. Yeah. One of those yeah. Is making Sorry, yeah. coffee taste absolutely delicious. That's why we fired him from Ballard. Like apricots, <laughs> didn't know how to do video. Or peaches. Oh, a little Japanese ice pour over there? That's my favorite product. My favorite part right there. In order just to serve it, we really need your help. By reaching our goal, we'll be able to. You look like a different person. I you look like me with a beard. Right didn't right have facial hair. And weighed. Like 15 pounds less. Our awards are tailored to fit anyone that gets them, whether it's a mug, a hat, a t shirt, or a water bottle. Uh, we really think you'll like what we have to offer. God, 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 come on. Yeah, so just bring it back in. Wow, what incredible art. The worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, okay, so now let's... How, when was the last time you two, Ross and Riley, watched this video? It's been a minute for me. What, what, first, what are the things that are jumping out at you? That either hurt you or make you smile? Oh, man. I mean, just the entire mission of our company at that point was uh, empty and meant absolutely nothing the it, the whole thing was like how can we convince people who don't know about coffee to taste these like yeah. highly acidic fruit forward coffees and have their minds blown yeah that was it yeah yeah that was like at least my passion you were basically trying to spread the gospel of like natural ethiopia i had tasted <laughs> a <laughs> natural coffee from Burundi from counterculture yeah. Buzira Guhindwa oh yeah and you remember this and did, yeah. Dale made me a pour over in it of it and I was like this doesn't taste like coffee and then that, that I'm so glad I had that experience but then to build a whole company around just that yeah if that's your compass then you kind of end up in some tough places okay so how did that compass change like when did what what were some of those like big moments where you're like, wait, I don't know if this is going to work the way we thought. Like how, how did, you know, how did that evolve into more of what you guys are doing now? And what were maybe, I don't know, were there iterations along the way as Ethan came on board? Obviously I'm sure he brought, you know, swagger. Yeah. <laughs> I think just appeal. <laughs> <laughs> just Ethan being Ethan really shaped who we are today. Um, mm. baby. Mm. Hey, um, funny, funny split up, man. I think this, we're just going to wrap it up. <laughs> me and how I affected the company. So. <laughs> no, I think just, uh, that mission that we had at that time was before we like actually served anyone. Mm. It was like before we actually did, you know, we the had a, a line of 80 people at a wedding, you know, slinging lattes or whatever. Yeah. And as we just started to serve people, and honestly, as Riley and I just like watched how Ethan served people, wow. um, it made our compass change more to like, okay, defining success is way more about uh, making people happy, simply. Um, and sometimes that is through them having like an insane coffee that blows their mind. But most of the time, it's just through like being engaging with someone and being kind to them. Yeah. Um, and then also having the desire to bring on employees eventually made us be like, we want to have a really great culture where people feel like they want to come to work and they're taken care of and they're not just clocking in and clocking out, but yeah. they are like really having fun and purpose at work. Yeah. So that came later too. So I think that mission in the beginning was – highly informed by our personal experience, mm -hmm. which is not wrong, yeah. but it was void of like real experience that we would gain later. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that makes me think of because when I think of Valor Coffee, not only is it my favorite coffee shop ever because I love you guys and you know believe in everything you do, but honestly, I feel like in the most object, like even in my most objective self, like when I tell people about Valor, I'm like, it's literally the best because, and you kind of hit on this, like for being, for having such specialty offerings, if you will, and incredible, you roast incredible coffee, like that's up to par with any of like, you know, these big like roasters across the country or whatever, but <clears throat> you'll make someone you know, a, a, a quadruple shot mocha with extra whip and you'll like smile about it. You know, like that's something that I've even, I've heard you say, you know, I've, I've witnessed as well is. Disclaimer, Valor Coffee does not have whipped cream. We do not. Oh, okay. My bad. We have marshmallows. <laughs> the point remains we get it. The point <laughs> remains <laughs> that they will tell you they don't have whipped cream, you know, and make you feel great about it, you yeah. know, but, but even just like, you know, you've kind of set yourselves apart from the more like, dare I say, like snobbier vibe of some of some more specialty like shops that I think in the past like five years, that's become like more of a normal, like as, as the specialty thing has like come about, people are like, like, Oh, you know, almost like where your mission started. Like we just need to give them what we know is best for them. And then they will, they'll convert, you know, mm. what was, what, what was it like? Like, was it hard for you guys to kind of let go of that and be okay with just, like you said, slinging lattes at a wedding, you know, or, or was it easy? Like, was it, was it, did it just kind of happen and you didn't even realize it was happening or does that make sense? Does that question make yeah. sense? Riley, why don't you go ahead? It can be as personal as you want. It doesn't have to be like a company wide. I mean, I just think, you know, listening to Cat and Cloud really kind of changed a lot of our perception, but also mm. just meeting Ethan, because me and Ross coming from this place of like really caring about product over people, and then Ethan mm. just kind of instantly caring about people over product. Uh, I don't want to just horn too much, like, it kind of sucks, but um, <laughs> what? that's. What? <laughs> That's kind of, I mean, it, it's kind of like every conversation we, the three of us ever have in a meeting starts with someone being reluctant around mm. something, or sorry, not every time, often it happens, um, where it's like someone has an idea and maybe one person agrees or maybe like both other people are like, oh, I don't know. So it was probably, you know, looking back on it, I can't quite remember, but it was probably something along those lines of kind of almost being scared of, you know, like whenever we started our pop-up at Thrive, mm -hmm. we only had 12-ounce cups. Mm. Like no 16-ounce hot coffee, like nothing. Mm -hmm. Because we were like, yeah, like that's, that's just too much milk in a latte. Like, we're like <laughs> that's too much. No one needs that much coffee. But like who are we to tell people what they need? So yeah. the it, that was proposed. And I mean, like how many 16-ounce drinks do we sell now? It's just, it was a... Many. Yeah, how many, Ethan? Um, I think the, like at least two or three a day, right? <laughs> plus, yeah. Yeah. Two, three plus. Um, so I think just instantly it just, it just made sense. Like yeah. that kind of got the ball rolling like those sorts of things, just like the ball kept rolling. And it's like, now people just don't have to feel like stupid. Like, can I have a yeah. 16 ounce coffee? And you're just like, I don't have 16 ounce coffees. <laughs> what? You idiot. Um, so maybe, maybe some reluctancy up yeah. front, but, but now it's just kind of, kind of all we care about. That's awesome. I love it. It was a relief for me, honestly, mm -hmm. because there came a point where my extreme passion for coffee started to dwindle, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I wasn't like as initially amazed as I was like in the beginning yeah. of like, I didn't know coffee could taste like this. What's well, like now I do know that coffee can taste like this. <laughs> and it's, I yeah. just kind of had this moment. I don't remember exactly where I was when I had this thought, but I remember having the thought of like, is this it? Hmm. Like is, because I feel like my passion and my 
drive for coffee is like not infinite. Yeah. I think it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to stop and I'm going to try really hard at it and I'm still going to be passionate about it, but it, it just can't, it's not my sole passion yeah. for working yeah. here. Um, and so when I, when we started to introduce the idea of like making cities better, like mm. being a bright spot in our city and making every every piece of geography we touch better and brighter, um, changing the fabric of a culture of a city, like yeah. th- that gets me way more stoked than how am I going to brew the best pour over yeah. and get some old dude to taste it and have his mind blown. <laughs> Like yeah. I, if that happens, that's great. But yeah, um, that's the kind of stuff that like gets me jacked. So when did that start to happen in the timeline of Valor? You know, um, with that video being when was that? Twenty eighteen, sixteen, sixteen. Sorry. Summer. Um, and today here we are, January sixth, twenty twenty two. Six years later, basically. When did that kind of like transition? start to start to happen for you guys i mean it definitely wasn't instant like you know even those things that like i was saying with the 16 ounce yeah uh coffees um I mean, and for was... context too you guys have only been in your um so you started as the pop-up then that pop-up basically lived at this co-working space thrive here in alpharetta and then how many years ago now a year and a half two years that you moved into the like the the storefront two and a half yeah. two and a half yeah, so I mean, you know, even hanging on to certain things like that took years to change. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some initial things were instantly removed. Like we never, well, I guess like our first event we served pour overs because that's all we had. <laughs> but we instantly were just like, we can't do pour overs at a catering event. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, in yeah. the the needs of people are always changing. Mm -hmm. So just this past year, we never bought heavy cream. Mm -hmm. We never, just because we didn't, like we always had half and half. But you just start to pick up on like, hey, can I get this? Can I get a coffee with heavy cream? Because it's keto. And you're like, oh, Oh. I'm sorry, we don't have heavy, heavy cream. And you just realize like you say something over and over again, Hmm. So you're just like, why? Why do I have to say no in this situation? Mm. What are the, what's the cost of being able to say yes? The cost is just like when we go to the store, <laughs> buy one of the things of yeah. ice cream. Oh, so really there's always something <clears throat> like that, and I think kind of what you were you were mentioning. I didn't know if you're gonna go there, but what a, such a bummer of a transaction in like a specialty coffee shop is if some normal person comes in. And like every question they ask has to be no, you know, you're like doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And like, obviously there's, there's an extent to that. Like we don't have milkshakes because we're not a milkshake bar. (laughs) That'd be sick. But (laughs) there's, there's like limitations to just your operation. But like when someone's like, Hey, can I get a 16 ounce cappuccino? You're like, well, first off, no, on so many levels, (laughs) cappuccino is actually traditionally six ounce and we don't even have. 16 ounce cups because the Italians didn't drink drinks that big and then they say can I get hazelnut and you're like no we don't have that flavor can I get it with coconut milk no we don't have that milk can I get it like you know whatever yeah and so in that scenario we don't even have a bunch of those things but we just want to be sensitive yeah. to the needs of our community and try to provide them in yeah that empathetic way yeah especially when it doesn't cost much mm-hmm. and that's that's been one of the most interesting like pendulum swings in our business that I've seen is on one hand, how do you maintain what he's talking about, about like I hear a need from a guest and I'm going to do whatever I can to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Like I, you hear this a lot in like specifically restaurants of like, Oh, we have a guest tonight and he just really, really wants Twizzlers for dessert. And it's like you look on the menu, there's not Twizzlers. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, the the host runs over to Kroger next door and grabs Twizzlers and they like plate it on this beautiful plate and it's like, you know, <laughs> Twizzlers, right? Lincoln Log House. So Twizzlers. that's awesome that they met the needs of one. And so that's one hand. And the other hand is like, 
we are who we are. And if you like yeah. us, come and get it. If you don't like us, like hit the road. Yeah. And I think ne- neither is good or bad. They both have beautiful parts of them. Because if you're constantly just, you know, driven by people and mm-hmm. their desires, then you will lose all sense of brand identity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you'll probably be spread way thinner than yes. is capable. Like Right. Yeah. And it, it's also the whole prioritizing guests over the team. Hmm. Like we prioritize the team over guests. So if you're constantly hmm. just at the whim of a angry guest, even if they're never going to come back, it's like we have to make them happy. Like your team is going to be the one that bears the brunt of that. Hmm. And uh, so whenever we like release a, a piece of freaky merch or whatever, or we have a drink on the menu, like a one in one that like, the vast majority of people don't understand that's us trying to maintain some semblance of like, we just do this cause we like it. That's cool. That's like also this podcast. Like we're not really doing this to like, because it's technical good business or whatever, even Follow though me on Instagram, <laughs> Ethan River seven, seven, seven. We just want to be able to do th- certain things because yeah. we like it and that's it. And that's going to make you, your customers, your guests, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Thank beep. You. Yeah, you can bleep that out. Um, uh, have a better experience of you too. You know, if you are feeling that, you know, that kind of fulfillment, being able to have the freedom to do things, you know, that you just want to do, like your guests are going to experience that, you know, that's awesome. I kind of feel like running a business this way and uh, experiencing, you know, trying to make myself experience other businesses that are really like uh, for you're for the guest makes me that much more upset whenever I like, okay. So example, I'm, I'm going to Nashville next weekend. Um, oh, flex. yeah. Well, <clears throat> flex. with, uh, with Michaela's sister and her husband. Um, and we were trying to figure out cause we're, we're staying two nights at a Hyatt. We both have credit card points and we were, trying to figure out, because it's so hard to transfer yeah. points like to someone outside of your household. Yeah. So the options were either to like print and fill out a PDF oh document God. from Hyatt allowing one of us to transfer points to the other. Or I was just like, you know what? I bet they'll help me. I'm just going to, I'm going to book this night. You book the next night. I'll call and see if they can make sure we stay in the same room. Yeah. And so I call and they just like, I was on the phone for like 30 minutes and they were just like, I'm so sorry. There's no way we can make this happen. Like, and I'm just like, can you not literally put, like, go ahead and find a room that's open now and put in the notes, like, put them in this room. And then on the next one, same as reservation from night before, put them in this room. Yeah. I don't know how their system works. Yeah. It could be way more complicated than that. But I'm just like, to be told no made me just kind of like, I'm not. I'm right, not going to say. I'm used to hearing. That listen, word. I'm used to saying no. It's fine to be told no. I'm fine with it. Yeah, if it yeah. was really genuinely too hard, then I I get it. But like I, it, it instantly made me think about a coffee shop being like, uh, you know, guest says like, can I have an espresso to go? And they're just like, no. I'm just like, <laughs> I know there's a way for you to make mm. this happen, and you're not going to make it happen. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. no on principle on that one. Yeah. 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 It's well, just that, like they were just like the the reservations are in different names, and I was <laughs> like, like, I know, I understand. Them. That's why I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I was even thinking about as far as like quality of the brand and like ease, like getting a 16 ounce coffee. We're still brewing the same high quality coffee. Mm-hmm. You know, there are things that you can do that stretch your empathy for the guest while very clearly maintaining the values and like the, the quality of the company. Um, I wanted to ask Dave a question. Oh, Oh, okay. This is a hypothetical. Um, so I don't want you to get, get weedy with it, but (laughs) just like today, if you were to be like an owner of valor, Uh, yes, give me the papers to (laughs) sign right now. What, um, don't worry about like, what we would do if you took our mm-hmm. spot or anything, but what would you, what would you do in this company? Like you, you oh I feel like you kind of know some of the workings, oh my like God. whatever you wanted to do and touch and not want to do would be complimented by us. Mm-hmm. But what, what would be like your role? He's like, yeah, I would probably start by opening a cafe in Redding, California. <laughs> yeah. I would be the Redding cafe manager for sure. 
Um, I mean, that's a really good question. And I don't know if I've ever thought about it. Um, I mean, because you guys got a really good thing going here, you know. Um, three is a good tell number. Tell us more. So. Three, yeah. <laughs> Compliment us more. Yeah, three is a really good number. Um, Maybe, like, organize some cables. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd like just be in the back, back of that rack guy. unit over there. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I um, I mean, I, I almost went to school for accounting, so maybe I could, you know, dabble a little bit in there, you know? Um, Music to Big TZ. Please. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It would be fun to to be, I don't know, kind of, it sounds like you guys are all, you all contribute to the vision. Like my, my understanding of the company is like, Ross has got a lot of big picture stuff going on. You, you, Ethan manage the cafe and, and big T does all the other things. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of my understanding, but you all are obviously like speaking into where do we want to go next? Where do you know, whatever. So I, I mean, it would be awesome to be like, if, if I was, you know, an owner of Valor, it would be fun to be in those conversations of like, you know, where are we going? What, what city are we going to touch next? Touch the fabric of next. Um, and, uh, and what is that going to look like for, for that city? And like, how can we even, you know, cater our, uh, I think, I mean, you guys have already talked about this, so this is not my original idea. Um, but like how can each store almost, um, have its own identity, like for its city. I think that kind of stuff is so fascinating. So I don't really know what that role would be. I may, I'm more just saying it would be so awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, I wanted to hear from you, but then I wanted to turn it to these guys who have known Dave for mm. many moons and with knowing his skill sets, what, how, how do you think he'd be a good fit here? Is this an interview? Is this podcast a whole big set? What's your day rate? <laughs> I mean, Dave is pretty similar personality type to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, you know, if he was, if Dave, if Dave was a fourth owner, mm. uh, like I would even twenty five percent. You think, or like, you know, yeah, you got to scale your well, way. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to put some sweat in. If he was a fourth owner. I mean, probably just some of my tasks, like especially mm-hmm. the project planning side of things. Um, he's a little more in with the hip crowd. Like I, I think that that he has, he, like he wears he wears rings on his index fingers. Oh and my stuff. god! <laughs> so, <laughs> so he could probably like help with some merch. Uh, maybe like, <laughs> he could probably like design a crossbody bag. A crossbody oh, bag. Dave. Um, oh my god! No, Dave, have you ever worn a crossbody? It's uh, just crossbot, guys. Yeah, I actually, I actually have not fully for fashion, even though it was kind of fun. It's a utility that, thing. Yeah. It is. It was more of utility. I was, I was a backline tech on a Bethel Music tour, and so I kept my my flashlight and I had my radio like attached to the. It was like a Patagonia little, mm-hmm. basically a fanny pack, but I wore it, you know, mm-hmm. across. And uh, you know, I got a little heat at the beginning, but mm. all of my my production <laughs> manager bought it for me. He like bought it for all of us. So all the production guys were just walking around with our, you know, I was wearing shorts every day, so it was so hot. So it's like shorts, a t-shirt, and this like crossbody. Wow. You know, I think in my opinion, the person here <clears throat> most likely to wear a crossbody would actually be Ethan. I think so too. Huh. Oh, not no. not because of fashion. No. Not way. because of that. Because you clear your pockets at any opportunity you possibly have. True. Like, are your pockets clear right now? More or less. <laughs> the, the phone's the last thing to go. Yeah. I'll keep that in, but keys and wallet have no place. Dude, <laughs> maybe we'll get you a crossbody. Just just to kind of see how it how it works. What what what's making you shake your head right now? I know exactly what it is. Let's hear it. No, I want to hear it from you, baby. Go ahead. Sorry, t- um, hey, I haven't actually thought about this <laughs> at all. It was this isn't like an on my radar kind of thing. Um, but I would. I don't know. I mean, it's just like another thing to put down. I feel like I, a mm. crossbod would not be sufficient for the other things that I would tote around on a day. So it'd be like I would have a bag because mm-hmm. I don't even do backpacks, which is weird. I'm so quirky. <laughs> yeah. Do you watch Harry Potter and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm a Gryffindor though. So it's not like I'm weird. I like thought that. you were gonna say that you like really relate to Luna. No, dude. That's usually like it's not like, I'm weird. like if you're a little different. Like no, I'm like 
cool Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Luna Lovegood? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would imagine I'd have to have a bag mm-hmm. and a crossbod, and I wouldn't want to have my phone in there. So it's Fair like, enough. There's you just, wouldn't want to have your phone in the crossbod. Yeah. I Interesting. Don't, okay. What if there's like an easy access pocket? There, so on mine, I would I say it's like it's got the one zipper across the front, and it's like with one hand, I just... You know, is like it on the exterior in. or interior? It's on the exterior. Okay. What do you mean and by so interior? Were, like I was, like I would be uncomfortable if it was just like if I could just like feel it on my chest. That would feel weird. <laughs> yeah, like kind of like Iron Man. <laughs> like what I was gonna say of reasons you wouldn't wear a crossbot is I feel like it is. I feel like your style is vintage with like some sort of modern flair or utility. Yeah. So and, and I've done this before and I. I don't know if we played this game, but it's describe your like fashion aesthetic in three words. And I don't like the word vintage, but I think it's true. I think it's like it's like vintage. I know you don't like that. I know, I'm but I, I'm using it's very it vintage myself. of you to say that. Yeah, <laughs> vintage monochromatic workwear. You know, mm. Crossbot does not fit into fit. those three. If I was vintage monochromatic hype beast, <laughs> dude, vintage monochromatic crunchy. I don't mm. know. Have you guys ever seen a barista wearing a crossbody behind the bar? No. I think that would be a bit weird. Portafilter right there. <laughs> <laughs> little That's brush. No, that, yeah, the, the palo brush like in the front. Yeah. That's pretty there. good. Because like right now you've got on these. Oh, Ross, you're, you're knocking the camera pretty hard. Oh, whoops. Uh-oh. Do I need to move it back? Oh, goodness. Oh. Should, we, should we just Where's check the feed? Going? You want to just check the feed? And... Yeah, we'll check the feed. Here, you, yeah, you keep going. Talk so, about it. Right now, you've got on some. It's, it'll be fun. Some Merrells, right? These are my. I bought these. Like Merrell Lynch. Put them up so the camera can I see. I bought these to work on the farm. Um, oh, they're Keens. They're, yeah, they're Keens. But they were thrifted. No. No, they were new. No, I went to REI and I said to the nice man, I said, hey, I'm looking. And this, is, this describes me pretty stupidly well. I said, I, I really want to buy some made in USA work boots. And he was like, Oh yeah, the Keens are the last ones that we carry that are made in the USA. I said, "Great." I tried them on. I bought them, and then I opened up the box, and it's just like Keens made in Vietnam. And I'm like, "Hey, no shade to <laughs> Vietnam. I'm sure whoever made these." But a little bit of shade to that worker that assisted yeah, you. And it yeah, was, and I'm sure it was an honest mistake. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I bought these. I bought these retail for the for the farm, but I. I like to wear them now as well. Right. Like you're not on the farm today. You're in the studio. You, well, maybe. <laughs> From farm to studio? It's like farm to table, wow. but... Farm to studio. Yeah. Maybe we can have a segment where you bring us some like veggies from the farm and we review them. <laughs> That's good. I like that. What are, the, what are the categories? Crunch, acidity, bug, uh, umami. What if... Okay, this could be dumb, but what if you judged it like you would a coffee? Like you only used like mm. coffee words, like but you're trying a like a radish. You're like, hmm, the mouthfeel is a bit a harder than I'm used to. <laughs> For like uh, fragrance and aroma, we have to like smell it dry and then pour hot water on it. <laughs> that would actually be kind of funny. Let's, what's soup? That's soup yeah. is what you're describing. We make a broth. Yeah. <laughs> and we cup the broth. Oh my God. I think we're on to something. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Wait. Intro song should be like tuned uh airplane sounds of <laughs> something like that. Why I was that the tune you chose? <laughs> because it came out of my mouth. Like <laughs> I love sports. Speaking of Oh yeah I was about to say don't didn't you guys want to talk about sports in this podcast? Are you do you do sports? <laughs> do I do them? Yeah. I'm not a big fan. I will say, you know, and Riley's gonna Mm. Hate me for this. Maybe mm. not hate me, but I, so I grew up a Georgia Tech fan. We all did, that's you right. know. That's right. Speak for yourself. But Ross is, you know, oh, sorry. We, uh, the three of us Gator did. Trump, I, baby. <laughs> um, but Ross is, uh, um, oh, wait, no, your, your mom works for the Falcons. I don't know what I was thinking. She was working for the dogs, the Bulldogs. Anyway, you know, oh, close enough, red, just red. I'm, you know, I'm not in uh, that much, but. But Georgia is going to the whatever championship, and I have a bunch of friends in Reading that are Georgia fans, and so I, I have watched some Georgia games this year. You know, mm-hmm. and did you get excited when they made a good? Play? I did. I was like, "Whoa, okay. this is cool!" Like, you know, I've got you know, like my He's state. backsliding big team. I am backsliding. Do you super know who? Hard. Do you know who Jordan Davis is? 
I've heard the name, but okay. Okay. <laughs> so I've watched the games too. I don't blame you for that. Mm-hmm. It's just I I can't cheer for Georgia. I can't either. It's yeah. They are just they're they're enemies. They they yeah. are the the Georgia team is a team of villains. <laughs> not 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 anyone specifically. It's just the team as a whole. Yeah. Once is, they is get to the NFL, team. they're chill. Nick Chubb. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nick AJ, Chubb. You're right. Great. You're right. The Sony Michelle and no my problem. my dad gives me so much crap for like, <sighs> you know, if Georgia Tech was in the championship, I'd root for them. And I'm just like, oh, is your dad a Georgia you fan? Can, oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. And I'm so like, you can say you that, become... but I know that deep down you would. Yeah. And like that's the, that's all Georgia fans have this thing about like, yeah, Tech hates Georgia, but like Georgia, like we don't hate Tech. Mm. And they're only and saying I'm that just because like, they think that. You know, tech would never make it to the yeah, the exactly. And I, I've Ouch. been I've been to games. That's what they like, think when tech has played in Athens, and like by far the worst fan base. Like, just everyone's a jerk. Yeah. Like, and I'm just like, okay, so you're gonna say you don't care about this rivalry, but like that's how you're gonna treat yeah. us whenever I we wonder, like, come down here. I wonder what percentage of our. Um, Guests. Oh, we're lo- that, we're losing uh, listeners. Give us money every day. Our Georgia fans or Georgia alum. Even we have how many Georgia alum on staff alone? Two. Yeah. So I mean, don't get me wrong, Georgia fans. I, I love you. I yeah. If you I, come to Valor, you're great. <laughs> even <laughs> even outside, it's like I have plenty of Georgia fan friends and maybe something about my you dad the and all my family. And things just get a little hairy. It's just it's just literally talking from a stance of like if yeah. you're talking about like their I don't know, every team is like, yeah, that other team cares way more about the rivalry than we do. Yeah. Like Georgia would say the same thing about Florida. Like they're like, Oh yeah, Florida, Tennessee, well we just beat them every year, so we don't really care about it. Which and I'm just true. like okay. I'm just like, you care about it. I can respect your your adamant stance and like for things that I'm passionate because we are a similar personality, I can relate to that. I'm just not quite as passionate about the subject of football as you. Do you like any other sports more? Uh, no, nope. I played tennis. Come on. Still do a little bit. Okay. Fun sport that we should all play. Pickleball. Pickleball. Yes. It's so fun. Where this one was going. Uh, (laughs) Buckle in. So you've played pickleball before. Yeah, it's super fun. It's very fun. It's very fun. It's very fun. Ras would probably be really good. Oh, Do you, you mean that? Stretch out. Yeah, you're yeah. so good. Long. Elongated. Didn't you play tennis in high school too? Or am um, I making that up? I tried out for... So I went to Pinecrest oh, Academy. I know. I know. In, Sponsor. In eighth grade. Thank Sponsor you. Us. Go Paladins. Um, <laughs> what? And I tried out... This is the... Just a shameless plug for my uh, juvenile athletic ability. Mm. This was the only team I didn't make. Ooh, I didn't dang. make the tennis team. And honestly, it was a big blow to my ego yeah. um, as an eighth grade you know, professional athlete. <laughs> um, because I went to Pinecrest to play sports. I didn't know. I, I so don't you're gonna, were you literally going to play them all? Work out? At least like that was my understanding. Yeah. Maybe my parents were just kind of like, Sure, letting bud. letting me think that, um, but yeah, I didn't make the team, so that's that's maybe what you're thinking of. What, tennis. Yeah. what teams did you make? Um, I just played basketball, football, and baseball all throughout my life. Those so are the only sports the teams yeah. they had, and cross country. Oh yeah, you ran. You and Maddie ran. Yep. How you fast? got a string on your head, bro. I just got to tell you. How fast um, can you run? Um, one time I was running down the road and one of those, uh, speed limit signs, like, oh, the, yeah. where to like get the office you. sketch, yep. um, huh? like and, the office cold open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I, I was like running with Rachel, my wife and I was like, babe, you want to see how fast I can run? She was like, no, I don't care. But I was like, I don't care. She was like, like baby, yes, please. I'm going <laughs> to so take that as a yes. <laughs> I'm going to run. And I ran, um, and I want to say it was like 16 miles an hour. That's pretty good. I could be wrong about that, but I think it was around there. Um, my fastest mile was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, in, in 10th grade PE, when we did the mile. <laughs> five, 
40 or I something mean, like that. To me, that's, that's 20 miles an hour right I there. Up so right? Much. Five times. No, sorry. That's five times 12. It's 12 miles an hour. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> didn't, so, like, I'm thinking about the fastest people. Like, DK Metcalf did, like, what, 22 in pads? What's it? The, 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 like, the interception? Rundown? Yeah. Let's, let's pull it up. DK Dude, should Metcalf we watch vocal production down. for Billie yes. Eilish? I wonder what his 5K would have been if he just stayed at that speed the whole time. Well, I don't know if he could have maintained that speed the whole time. Yeah, this That's is a good like point. hypothetical. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. You really have a you good angle this, on these things, Ethan. You know? I'm big at poking you seen holes. This video? I don't think <laughs> I've seen it. It is absolutely metal. <laughs> absolutely metal. With six different receivers, and this time he lost Oh, he jumped it. Whoa. There he goes. Oh, my gosh. He is running very fast. Oh my God! And they went on to stop them at the goal line, right? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I think that was a big part of like without this effort, right? Dude, Seahawks five and five and zero. Was that last season? Wait, I, I'm really sorry. Yeah, Are we being impressed by the Seahawks or the Cardinals? We're guy? being impressed by the Seahawks player running down that the caught him. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, there's at least like 15, 20 yards in between them. And he, he's right there. Whoa, yeah. Okay, I do. And that dude is like huge. I mean, oh yeah, let's massive. watch him. Now. Oh man. <laughs> Holy crap! But, but he, he slowed down a little bit there too when he thought he was going to get blocked. So. In light of this, Damn. have you seen the videos of him running with actual track stars? No. And getting like oh yeah, destroyed. like his Olympic tryout or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yes, I have. Not not to diminish his ability. Not at all. It's just not what you know. It's a different sport. It's, it's a yeah. different sport. Um. Really quick, Buda Baker is so good. Did you guys watch that Cardinals? Uh, Cowboys game? No. He's just all over the place. Mm. No, he's talented. Oh, all right, show us, show us what we want, what we came for. This one hundred prelim. I see that guy kind of on the right, the big guy. Yeah, the big guy. Oh. I mean, he like imagine running with those guys though. Yeah. Like to oh, even yeah. keep up. Oh yeah. It's I a would different be so too. far behind. Second heat of the Nike men's 100. Metcalf's hanging with them at the moment. It's fairly even. DK's doing a good job. On the <laughs> inside, though, CJ Ucha <laughs> and Mike Rogers. That was close. He's just right behind. That sucks. Like, just his time. arm mask. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah. He's just pulling a lot more weight than they are. I think we get the picture. That, no, let's watch them all. That's a really weird bodily sensation. I don't know if you guys want to speak into this. When you're trying to run as fast as you can <laughs> and you have like no form or technique, you're just like, am I like pushing myself <laughs> as much as I can? What? Am I about to fall over? That's funny. Well, I can really relate to DK, actually. Wow. Yeah, I've Whoa. always did. Yeah. Yeah. a lot of comparisons to draw. In that, um, you know, whenever he was trying to catch Buda Baker after his quarterback had been picked off, he had a goal in mind, you know, to oh, go <laughs> go just... and get, you know, there was a reason for him to run run super fast. And for me, that reason is when Giselle, my two-year-old, starts running towards the road, uh, I bet I run faster than DK Metcalf. Oh, my Fair God. enough. Like, I guarantee you I do because... So moms can lift cars, but... Men can run, dads can run faster than DK Metcalf. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know if it's all dads, definitely me, but <laughs> we can just say because it. you played all sports throughout high school, yes. besides tennis. Ross has tennis. constantly tennis. told me that he thinks, okay, this is a, we started this conversation when we were probably like 17 and we used to play 2K a lot. <laughs> and like my favorite teams always had Iman Shumper off the bench. Maybe it's because he's from tech and I like resonate with that, but he was like, Definitely never never a star, right, in the NBA. No. He was a pretty good six man, um, started here and there, but he was just really good on the game. And Ross was like, Yeah, I, I bet if if we played one on one, I could I could put up at least like it it would probably end up twenty one to eight or something <laughs> like that. And I was just like, dude, you are absolutely insane if you think you would put up a single point against Iman Shumper. Is he a big man? He's six 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 probably. I'm taller than him. Um, yeah, well, there you I mean go. Ross, you're taller than a lot of people, man. Well, he, he's working with six five. 
But um, he looks like a mean guy, like he, nice, but you know. I mean, mm. he was a professional. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. He hair. had an yeah, cool awesome hair. flat top. Yeah. Check that out. That is sick. Woo. Woo. Okay, never mind. Well, now he's like, what? never mind. Seven, yeah. two. I give but up. okay, so I haven't told you about this, but a development I saw. There's like this bit that people have about like the NBA's worst player. Oh. Um, let me see. So, the NBA's worst player. It's like a data thing. Yeah. Yes, here it is. Maybe maybe I can find this. Oh yeah, this this ought to be good. I watched the video. Our plumber just got here. Nice. nice. Um, What's he doing? I can't find it. Plumber. It's whoever whoever this guy is. Anyone know who that is? No. Maybe he'll tell us at the start of the video. No. Whoever this guy is, we're giving him some. Uh, Man, you know, I've been love. Uh, where I was at, it um, I couldn't shoot my videos. I oh, tried, it just wait, wasn't, nope. it wasn't working, it wasn't good enough for me. So, today we got some Jimmy High Roller. We're gonna get here right it is. I don't want to sit here and talk I too think. much. We got Jimmy High Roller, and uh, it's green. when they called out an NBA player and instantly regretted. Now, look. oh, here's here's essentially the thing this guy, like yeah. the bit is like he is the worst player in the NBA, okay. Um. You actually you left out a part of the workout, which was that you played. I don't want to watch all this. Come on, man. I need like a. Oh, here it is. High school. High schooler calls out that guy to a one v one and gets shut out. I get in the video. Glad they have their masks. The it works in the gym. It's like when you sit down to eat. Try straight now. What's the game to? Just whatever. You're going to just dribble around till I get my ass tired. Yeah. Where you guys play? Where you guys play? Fuck you, Zay. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey. You said hit the weight room. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So anyways, this guy is statistically, like, the bit is, I think that he scored three points in his career or something like that. Oh, God. Um, just, like, deep off the bench. And he comes and beats that guy who he's playing, who probably plays basketball more than Ross did, okay? <laughs> mm. Just for context, you know. And so he comes in and he shuts that kid out. So imagine what Iman Shumpert could do to Ross. Anyone? Ross is still Is anyone on convinced. Ross's side here? I'm imagining a lot of stuff right now. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I see Ross scoring a point. Maybe I see him getting on the board. I would say he, to 21, he would get on the board one time. Like two miracle points? Yeah. Well, that's what the, the conversation evolved to is like you couldn't score one time. And I'm like, yes, I could. I could like score one time. Like if you just time. sky hooked 21 attempts. You know, you can't block the sky. I hook. still don't think you would be able to really get a shot off unless it was an absolute miracle. I think, okay, if you guys played like 21 best of three. Uh, yeah. Hey, dude, your XLR fell down. Uh, your like XLR is showing. Well, <laughs> you uh, didn't put a lot of gaff tape on here. Well, right? dude, we don't have we don't have infinite funds around here, David. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so if I was a co-owner of Valor, I would make sure that there was plenty of gaff tape okay. around. Yeah, office. that's a beautiful. I think I put these XLRs on a word curse because I, whenever we got them, they're built into the uh, stand, and yeah. so I said, "Well, what if they break?" And then they all broke. I'm sorry. Never worked, not even once. Uh, don't try to change the subject, man. This is brought to you by Frameworks. Um, <laughs> uh, so. I think unless it was an abs so best of three t to twenty one, I think you would score two points in one of those games. Do you, well, do you get two ways. points for one shot? Well, in twenty one, twenty one you do. You do two. No, threes. it's one. We it's would one just pointers. be playing one on one. Yeah. What? Well, so one, okay. All one so pointers, let's unless... let's really you know let's up the ante a, a little bit. Um, Iman, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Walters wants to challenge you to one-on-one -on -one basketball. Let's go, baby. To 21, best of three, 
just to see if he can score one point. Oh, Name your place. Yeah, what are the we'll be <laughs> yeah. there. We'll fly out. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Are you well, willing, can we bring the studio? Are you willing to shell <laughs> yeah, out? Yeah, we'll sit down with Iman. Like if you don't get on the board, he gets like X he, percent of the company. Um, <laughs> Only if he's bringing his ideas. I know he's a businessman. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. The Georgia Tech. It takes a lot to get there. Yeah, I love that. We could, we could use a little yellow jacket flair. That's right on the team. Yes, I'll I'll give equity away if he wins. Okay. Not okay. In wins, that in that I case, can, can you and I play? So can, I want some equity because he's going to win. <laughs> so if you can't score, twenty one best of three. If you can't score one time, he gets equity. He gets equity. Yeah. Yes. One percent. So your your verbal agreement to that, Amon, come on. If I play Amon Shumpert and I can't score, I will give away one percent of my equity. All right, yeah. To to a man Okay. <laughs> to, to him directly. All right. <laughs> Unto. All right. It's settled then. Okay. We got it. That's a good sound bite there. That'll be on TikTok. <laughs> I've heard of that. Local coffee roaster owner challenges <laughs> former NBA sixth man <laughs> to three rounds of 21 in order to earn 1% of equity in local coffee roasters business. If he doesn't score <laughs> at all. That, that's <laughs> clickbait 101 right there. That's good. I mean, Ethan, what are you curious about about Dave's life? Yeah, you don't you don't know me quite as well, you know. I've always I don't see you as a, you know, like people when they're walking by and you're in a relationship with them. You can kind of pick up on like are you an older brother are you the youngest mm. are you middle and you're the oldest right you're oldest, and then you have two younger brothers yep how do you think that showcases itself in your life how do you like wow. embody number one kid, kid <laughs> how do one. i embody number one how do well you embody Ethan, being number you know one? <laughs> um that's a really good question uh and it's interesting because you know if, if any of you are familiar with the Enneagram, I'm a type mm. one. So is Riley. But Riley's not the oldest child. And I... He's the baby. He, he's the baby. Um, but you only have... Still is it the is. one older sister? Is that it? Dave. Or two, it two older sisters. Two older and sisters. And a big gap. So you're yeah. basically an only child. No. Okay, so that, you know, that seven, could... Seven years is the reset. Yes, that is I mean, true. You can say that. I do not feel like I grew up as an only child. Okay, fair all. enough. I Is was it like, because your sisters already had kids at that point? I don't, I don't really no, know. No, it's nowhere, nowhere close to that. Uh, it's it's 11 and 7 years. Okay. So, I mean, I was, like, at all of their sports, sporting events as a kid. Yeah. Like, one of my sisters graduated high school when I was in, like, fifth grade. So it it wasn't anything too crazy. Yeah. But, I don't know. I was just so, curious because... Uh, yeah, speak for yourself, Ethan. <laughs> okay. I was just curious because... I've always felt like the type one personality kind of resonates with what I feel like an older child kind of like typically would pre like typically would present as, you know, in the sense of, uh, you know, pretty structured, pretty black and white, very, you know, doesn't want to disappoint authority. Um, but you know, pretty like principled and, you know, my wife, Lily, it, gives me a hard time but i you know i loved math like you know that kind of like very black and white like world you know kind of thing but <clears throat> um and i don't know i don't know if it if it, if it makes people more prone to be like like a leader type or anything like i don't know um do you find yourself naturally leading in in groups of people or in circumstance usually i feel like that's such a, I, I think about that differently now. Like in school, I don't know if people talked about like, are you, you know, like natural leader or whatever. I always thought about like, you know, taking charge or like, all right, this is what we're going to do. When really, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I, f I definitely feel like I, um, I'm not afraid to say what I think. Mm -hmm. most of the time. And I think that that's probably what comes out the most, you know, even if that's not, you know, if we're in a group setting, even if that's not what we go with, like, I'm not, like, I'm not as prone to be like, Oh, you know, I don't know, like whatever. I'm, I'm very like, I, I usually know what I think about something and I, you know, I'm ready to communicate that to the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why? Um, well, I mean, 
Great question. Usually because, and, and again, I'm so curious to see like how much you would resonate with any of this, Riley. But um, you know, not saying it's all comes down to like your type on the Enneagram. But I usually I am really quick to do that because I think my way is the best way. <laughs> Sure. And so, you know, I just deep down, I'm like, I think I know the, the best way to do this. And like the way that I usually do this is has to be the best way because, you know, if, if it wasn't, I wouldn't be doing it this way. Like I would, <laughs> I would want to know the best way to do this, you know? And so, and I, I've, I've even heard, I think you say this before. Um, but Riley is whoever, I, who I text when I like, you know, I'm like, what savings account do I open? What credit card do I, whatever. And and I think it's cool because it, it's kind of given me a picture even into my own life of the one, you know, not that this is an Enneagram podcast, but the one seeks to better his or her community um, through that avenue of like, like, like I'm going to share, I'm going to share what I think is the best way to do something. And that's me loving you. Like, right. That's Riley loving me is him t- telling me like, you know, I use this, I use this credit card for gas and I use this, you know, whatever. And like, I don't know. I, I I've thought about that a couple of times of like, that's the way that <clears throat> like we, like even I've had to learn how to do this well with my wife because, you know, she's like, sh- she say, you know, we all have to do this with our wives, but they like, you know, they have an issue, they have a problem, whatever. Most of the time, you know, classic. We all know they just want us to listen, but I instantly go into, you know, of like, Oh, this is how I would do it. This is how, you know, and this is, that's me trying to love her. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to make her life better and easier and, you know, more efficient and more whatever. And, you know, she on the Enneagram, she's, she's a four, very heart centered, very empathetic, very, um, emotionally attuned. And most of the time she wants to be loved by feeling, you know, listen to and, and taking care of and heard. And I'm just trying to make her life better and easier. And to be fair, like a lot of times, and she would, she would like, you know, maybe be mad at me for saying this, but she would also probably laugh. Like a lot of times, like if she did some of the things that I said, you know, <laughs> that sounds so domineering. That's not what I mean. She would just, she would just listen. listen to me, you know, sure. Maybe her life would be quote unquote, like easier in some way. But that doesn't mean that she would feel any more loved by me, you know. Mm. Um, I don't know. That went a different direction, but I loved no, it. I, I think like it's, that. you know, your your greatest uh, strengths are often your greatest weaknesses. That's true, Big T. Just stop it right there. Well said. I think everyone here knows that I think my way is the best way because that's why right. else would I uh, be doing it? <laughs> that's right. And that's my, yeah, it's, you know, you can... You can run with that as I'm going to help everyone because I, I feel like I know. Yeah. And then it's just like, this guy's a jerk. Yeah. Totally. No, I mean, it can't. It can. It's learning totally balance. It's yeah. just learning balance, and you know. But yeah. And it's different when someone invites you into a space. Yeah. You know, there's unsolicited advice and counsel, and then there's like people knowing mm-hmm. your giftings and seeking you out, like yeah. you asking him. Yeah. When you were talking about that, I was like. I know for a fact that I, if you ask me, like, the statement is, like, my way is the best way. My first thought was, my, my way is a way. I was just like, uh, I'll make a decision, but hey, this is just the way I'm doing it. <laughs> you think there's a better idea? Bring it on. Yeah. We're just going to go with this because this is the decision that was made. Yeah. That's interesting. So, you know, we would say my way is the best way. You would say my way is a way. What way how would you describe your way, Ross? I would say mine is a mix of both. Like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> um, so okay, if Rachel and I are trying to make a tough decision, yeah, I want to. If if she's good, I don't care. Yeah, like I don't really care about the like principle of like this is technically the best mm-hmm. way or whatever. I I guess I just really value that like relational harmony. Mm-hmm. Um and that can be a problem sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like again, talking about if something is your compass, like if that if relational harmony is always like the metrics metric of success, like you'll find yourself in some 
sticky places. Totally. Um, so it's hard for me. A lot of times I'll like know the right decision. Um, but it's hard for me to like, I, I don't, I don't feel like I ever want to just be like, this is what we're doing. Cause yeah. I don't think that's how leadership works in a home or anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even though it, it pays to be, uh, directive and it pays to just make a call sometimes. Um, I don't really view marriage that way. So I don't know, I guess us just being like one, I want to make sure that like everybody on board is feeling good about the decision. Mm. Um, and a lot of times I've struggled with making bad decisions that end up hurting everyone just to make someone happy. Hmm. So like, I know we've struggled with this too. Like one of us has an idea and the other two partners like don't really feel like we can really speak into it because feelings might get hurt. Hmm. So then the idea overall is weaker because really only one person had their eyes on it as opposed to one person bringing an idea, two people doing their best to understand it and then adding to it. Um, and then it being a stronger idea. Yeah. So that's definitely like a pretty gray answer. No, I know. That's, I love that. That's a good answer. Uh, Dave, what are you most excited about this year? Whether travel or you got any tours coming up or Play. anything? Play. Playing? You playing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I, uh, I've been playing with... Um, Brooke Ligerwood more. She's a worship leader from like the Hillsong kind of world, but she, you know, did, did her own album last year and I played on it. And so it'll be coming out soon. I think I don't really know when, but we recorded it in November. And so I've been playing with her more. Um, and that's been really awesome. The team that she has, like the band that plays with her is it's great. It's like, it's people from kind of all over. It's people that I don't normally get to see but that I really, you know, look up to and respect what, what and have a great time on it. I play keys. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about all that. And, um, Gable Price and friends is doing another album this year. I'm excited for that. Nice. So be on the lookout. Dude, when are we getting a, a David Funk solo album? Dude, I don't know. I've got, I've got one song that I'm really, um, really excited about and I want I, I want to release it just as I think as another like single, like another live single kind of similar to like Touch of Heaven. Have you um, sang it at church yet? I have, yeah, several times. Did it resonate? Um, I felt like it resonated. I felt like... <laughs> Very musical. That's, so that's how it starts. <laughs> what note is that, Dave? I have no idea. I wish I had perfect pitch. Ross thinks he has perfect pitch. No, I can just figure it out, kind of. Well, now it's kind of fluctuating. Oh, the com- back to the compass. You know, you have a compass for those sorts of things. Sounds like a bee. A beehive next door. Um, well, where's that even coming from? Is it? Is it's it from even- the apiary? Oh, <laughs> what does what? that mean? An apiary is a. It's like a, where you have bees. Oh. Oh, nice. Sorry, <laughs> dude. Aren't you vegan? <laughs> David, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. So I remember being in my parents' basement yes. with you, yes, like watching Jesus Culture yes. videos, and we were like, Chris Kilala, like, Cundi. Jeffrey Cundy. Cundy. Man, second podcast in a row, we're talking Cundy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Cundy, if you're watching this, I love you. And I remember Sponsors. just like, so we were just kind of starting to play worship music yes. at that point, and I just remember being like, that is everything <laughs> that yeah. I want yeah. is like, the big stage, like, but for God and, (laughs) you know, uh, yeah, that, that's like the epitome of what I want to do. Yeah. And so I I never thought, actually, I always thought you would be doing that, but, Mm. um, going from that in the basement to like playing with one, one of the biggest artists Mm -hmm. in Christian music in the last whatever 10 years. Yeah. Um, one like general insights on that journey. Wow. Two, okay. what would you say to some 17 year old like us in the basement, in the basement? That's like the platform. 
is what I want. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. like, what would you say to, to someone like that, given your journey? Yeah. Wow, that's a good question. Well, I think I'll kind of start with the second part cause, and just see what comes out of it. Um, but I think, you know, the most obvious thing I can say to our little 17-year-old hearts in the basement, you know, borderline idolizing this, like, idealized life that we feel like these people have. First of all, you know, like, we're getting to see a snippet of, you know, we're getting to see, like, a, a seven minutes of their life, you know, and, and then the rest of it is not always like that. Not saying it's not awesome, like, I love my life, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, it's not as good as you think, like, you know, it's awesome. Like, I really love what I do. I love that I get to travel. I love that I get to, you know, um, be friends with all these amazing people I've looked up to, all that stuff. I love that I get to lead worship and that people are impacted by what we do. I think that's awesome. Um, but it's like, I still have so much of it. Like we all do. I'm like all of the people that you could ever like look up to still have like normal lives, normal problems, you know? And so it's not like, attaining that thing, that stage, that, you know, platform, that, um, book, that album, whatever, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it attaining all that is not going to solve all your problems or make your life any different. <laughs> well said. Um, and then the other thing, I, yeah. <laughs> is that, you think, you guess that's a router? No, I think it is one of, I don't know the name for it. It's those saws that has like almost that flat top and you like yep. cut stuff like this. He's probably doing some work on this. Making space for pipes or <laughs> cables. <laughs> so that's the plumber cutting the wall. Oh, yeah. Um, it's by our plumber, right? If that's happening in our space... I have no idea why. <laughs> awesome. Well, here's hoping, right? Sam's just yeah. like, yeah, you can cut right there. You know? <laughs> Anywhere over there is good. Have to get Patch cut. Boys back out here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Today's podcast is brought to you by Patch Boys. Thanks, uh, Patch Boys. Just kidding. Um, was, you were about you were going to say. Well, yeah, I was going to say the other thing. You know, is that, and this is super obvious, but you know, that. Like speaking to us, speaking to, you know, me and Ross and Ross's basement, watching those videos, like thinking that that is like the best thing ever, you know, it is. Um, but also it's like, yeah, there's, I think what I was trying to say is, you know, there's still so much more of life to be lived beyond that. And the thing is though, is there's no way, like, I don't think there's any way to get that through a 17 year old's head and that's okay. Like that's appropriate. I think that's like by God's design is that we're on this journey of, you know, discovering what matters. And I don't think that, <clears throat> I don't think that, you know, God was like disappointed in us. It's like, Oh wow. They just don't get it still, yeah. man. You know, like mm -hmm. I think, and I think there's so many ways, even as a 24 year old that I still don't get it, you know? And um, and that's just the journey of, of learning and growing. And so I think that there's, there's no shame in where we were at, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's where our perspective is always, you know, changing and stuff, um, uh, about that. Even like what you said about you got into Valor and yeah. all you wanted to do was like have an old guy taste, you know? Buzir yeah. Vahendwa, you know, <laughs> and just have his, but things have changed now. Like you have a different perspective. Like now the guests matter more now, you know, even more than the guests, like you, you didn't have, you weren't married then you didn't have GG then like so much of your life is being like reprioritized -prior all the time. Like every day, like new things are happening. Um, so that's kind of part of it. It's like, you know, sure. I'm not in the coffee business, but it's still like, I can still relate to that in, in, ways, you know, where mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, it's still kind of just a job. It is like, it's a bit of a gray air cause it's like, it's ministry, you know, it's like, and I don't want to just treat it like a job, you know, like clock in clock out, you know, I want to, you know, um, cause it's, it's for God, you know, it's for other people. It's for, you know, all these things. Um, so it isn't this quite the same as a job, but in a way I almost like 
sometimes we'll treat it like that of like, you know, I go to work, but then I, I come home to Lily, you know, and she like, she's the most important thing to me, uh, you know, like above the travel, above the, you know, albums, above whatever, like she's who I have to come home to for the rest of my life. So that's what I need to be investing in the most. Cause all the other stuff, you know, like those videos we saw, like they may be on that stage that day. And then, you know, like they could go through a, you know, a time of like, they're, they're not playing at all. You know, it's like those things are just going to come and go, you know? So being thankful for them when they're here is important, but you know, investing in the things that are going to be there all like, no matter what is, is more important. Sage words, Dave. <laughs> what a great way to wrap it back around. That's amazing. Uh, Dave, you want to tell people how they can find you? <laughs> um, you can find me. You can find me uh, in Redding, California. Uh, but yeah, I mean, on the interwebs, you mean? Yes, David. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm on Instagram at the David Funk. And uh, yeah. Spotify. David Spotify, Funk. David Funk. You can listen to. Uh, some songs. One of them's in Spanish. It's pretty awesome. One of them's in Spanish, yeah. You sing in Spanish? I sang a song in Spanish, yeah. 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 That's so cool. Sufrido de hijo. De hijo. <laughs> I, I can't even say it Dude, anymore. what? <laughs> Something son? Is it son of suffering? Yeah, son of suffering. All right, Dave. Thanks, man. Thank you, you guys. Thanks for having me. This Love is so, you so fun. Much, Love Dave. you so much, Dave. I'm going to tell you that too once we get off the air. All right, sick, bro. Yeah. <laughs>